hopefully, meteorology, and he finds himself here at Channel 3, where every day he, David sings, he can sing Little Mermaid. Like a lark. <laughs> Like you've never heard. He <laughs> sings gospel music, but you're an the awesome... The problem is Little Mermaid, I sing the Sea Witch. That's the only one I know is the Sea Witch. Yeah, I don't he doesn't know any of the sing other the other aerial one. Yeah, who, who, who Sorry, does. anyway, he was impersonating somebody who we both know, and I literally thought you were him. I'm so glad you're not. Yeah. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at noon. Good afternoon, I'm Latrice Curry. Thanks for watching Eyewitness News at noon. We are going to go right now live to Knoxville where there is a news conference going on after Butch Jones was let go yesterday. Let's go to Knoxville for the very latest on this news conference taking place. Uh, we are going to coach our hearts out for the seniors. Um, our hope is that in the next two weeks, the next two games, the team coaches, uh, former Vols, uh, and the Vol uh, Nation make it a great experience for those kids. Because at the end of the day, that's what this game comes down to, our uh, development and nurturing and teaching and mentoring uh, the young men that are in the program. And uh, they've had a tough year. Uh, but they do deserve that recognition in these next two football games. Um, our focus as a team and as a program, again, is on the seniors. Um, we're going to live in the present. Uh, we'll meet at 2.30 today, and we will start preparing for LSU. Question. Lady. Yeah, Brady, do you have to coach this team differently as an interim than you did when you were coaching as a, as a head coach, or, or do you approach this the same way you did to your previous head coaching job? Well, I think this, you know, when, when I took the head football coaching job at Ball State University, and I was an assistant at Michigan at the time, and uh, Coach Schembechler told me one thing before I, before I left, and he said, uh, be yourself said, you can't be Lloyd Carr, you can't be Bo Schimbeck or Gary Moeller. you got to be yourself. So, uh, like I talked to the, uh, um, uh, the players yesterday, uh, I'm going to be who I am. And uh, uh, we will tweak some things because of the comfort level that I have and how uh, I would like to run a program. Uh, there's a lot of similarities that we have done. But there's some things in the way we'll practice. There'll be a couple things in uh, how we uh, approach each day. 
but you know I, I've got to be who I am. If not, that's uh, uh, that that would be a fraud. Uh, Brady, you guys uh, obviously the team meeting yesterday. Just what was the uh, I guess the tenor of, of the team meeting with, with Coach Jones and, and kind of how, how how have the players' moods been uh, in the last 24 hours or so with everything that's gone on? Well, uh, you know, it, it was a team meeting, and. Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to keep it at that. You know, what was said, what wasn't, uh, reaction, whatever. That, that's a football team uh, deal. We'll go Austin, Steve, Jimmy. Brady, who will handle your responsibilities with the defensive line? Will it still be you, or will, will Nate Ollie step up into that role more? Well, that's a good question. No, uh, number one, you know, Nate Ollie. Uh, 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 as you would figure, being a Ball State grad also has done a tremendous job, you know, and, uh, and what he has done uh, with our defensive line and assisting me, uh, I have a ton of uh, uh, confidence. He, he will uh, uh, still work together with me, but there'll be times when uh, I'll be somewhere else and uh, he's got the respect of the guys on the defensive line and he'll do a great job. It's been a few years since you've been the head coach. You kind of gone into being an assistant. Did you ever think, like obviously, you don't didn't want it under these circumstances by any means? But did you ever think there was a possibility you could be a head coach in some capacity again one day, or had you kind of thought I'm an assistant for the You long? know, I think you know the question is uh, is is one. It's it's a good question because you know uh, you, you live each day. You know, you're living the day. You don't. I I don't think of that a lot. Hadn't thought of it a lot. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, you know, we, we got to stay and I have to stay in the present of what we want to accomplish for these seniors. And to me, that's what this is all about is uh, uh, finishing out uh, for them in a positive manner. news conference on Rocky Top at UT after which Jones let go was let go yesterday. That was Brady Hope, the interim coach answering questions. And of course, the team meeting today at 2 30. Our Jill Jelnick is there. We're going to have much more on this all throughout the day, also on air and online. So keep it right here for the latest on what's going on with the balls right now. Let's switch gears. Let's head on over to David Carnes and the Storm Alert Center. Uh, David, of course, nice day out there today to start our work week. It really is beautiful uh, afternoon heading our way. Gorgeous blue skies after some big time clouds this morning. Holly in downtown camera giving us a nice view there. We're in the low to mid 50s, a little breezy winds out of the north at 13 miles per hour and just feels great outside. Nice, cool, crisp air temperatures a bit below where they should be. This is our Viper cast and very little in the way of cloud cover. No rain for the rest of the day. Getting some yard work done. Go for it. We'll top out at maybe 60 degrees. Great weather to rake up all of those leaves and then do it again in about a day or two because they are still falling. Yeah, we'll have your complete forecast. Rain is in the next six or seven days. Details just ahead, Latrice. All right, thanks so much there, David. Still ahead on Eyewitness News at noon. President Trump is finishing up his tour of Asia. We take a look at his latest stop after the break. Plus, David will be back with a full look at your forecast a little later. Stay tuned.
President Trump finishing up his tour of Asia with a visit to the Philippines and a controversial meeting with its leader overnight. NBC's Peter Alexander is traveling with the president and has this report from Manila. President Trump here in Manila for a Southeast Asian Economic Summit, hailing his host, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte. We've had a great relationship. This has been uh, very successful. Duterte, a controversial authoritarian accused of ordering a bloody crackdown on his nation's drug war, including extrajudicial killings of thousands of drug dealers and users. The White House says human rights briefly came up in the leaders meeting, but the Philippine government insists it wasn't raised at all. The president's visit sparking protests, riot police using water cannons to disperse the crowds. Mr. Trump winding down his Asian tour with a toast and a tribute. Duterte serenading the U.S. Commander-in-Chief with the lyrics, You are the light in my world. The president also appearing to struggle with the customary summit handshake, seen here grimacing as he grasped hands, later touting significant progress on trade and warm receptions everywhere. was uh, red carpet like nobody I think has probably ever received. And uh, that really is a sign of respect, perhaps for me a little bit, but really for our country. Still looming over the president's trip, his relationship with Vladimir Putin. Former CIA director John Brennan questioning whether Mr. Trump is being manipulated by his Russian counterpart, noting the president's ambiguity on Moscow's meddling in the 2016 election. I think it demonstrates to Mr. Putin that uh, uh, Donald Trump can be played by foreign leaders who are going to appeal to his ego, and to try to play upon his insecurities. Brennan delivering that warning after President Trump slammed him and other former intelligence chiefs as political hacks, while appearing to give Putin the benefit of the doubt. I believe that President Putin really feels, and he feels strongly, that he did not meddle in our election. What he believes is what he believes. What I believe is that we have to get to work. The president trying to have it both ways, also supporting the U.S. assessment that Russia interfered. I believe in our intel agencies as currently uh, led by fine people. I believe very much in our intelligence agencies. That was Peter Alexander with that report. The president will head back to Washington tomorrow and is planning to make a major announcement Wednesday. He said it will recap the trip and focus on trade and North Korea. Coming up on Eyewitness News at noon, are you looking for a few extra ways to earn money heading into the holidays? Our technology reporter has some solutions for you on the other side of the break. Plus, have you booked your flights to see family over the holidays? When can you expect those holiday deals? We'll let you know.
With the holidays approaching, many of us would like to make a little extra money for gifts. Even if you think you don't have any spare time for a second job, you may not have heard about a few online opportunities that let you set your own hours doing only what you want to do. Our consumer technology reporter Jamie Tucker shows us how it all works. These are not get rich quick schemes, though that would be kind of nice, right? These are honest jobs paying real money. And the first is a side hustle of Amazon's called the Mechanical Turk. And never mind the name, this is a marketplace for work. Businesses can and do advertise, hire, and pay freelancers to do what only people can do. Uh, many of them are as simple as looking at a receipt from a store and identifying the store from looking in its logo and then entering the name of that store in a text format. Each receipt you read pays a couple of pennies. Or you can transcribe business card information, three cents a card. If you can do 10 in a minute, you're making 18 bucks an hour working from home. Uh, some jobs pay more. Some where you're needed to transcribe audio into text will pay over $50 per project. Can you draw, write, work on websites, do voiceover work? Let Fiverr advertise what you do, then wait on someone to hire you. Web developers and graphic artists hang their shingles at Fiverr, accepting jobs paying anything from five dollars to $10,000. And odd jobs have a new meaning at Fiverr. This guy earns extra money singing a sad and very strange version of Happy Birthday as a mouse. You won't get rich quick. You won't get rich at all, but these odd jobs, and I do mean odd jobs, could help you earn a few extra bucks for the holidays. By the way, the uh, job of the drunk mouse singing happy birthday, it's been filled. That's What the Tech. I'm Jamie Tucker. Amazon lists over 345,000 jobs at its Mechanical Turk project right now. There are some estimates that it's paid out a total of $150 million over the last 12 years. With less than two weeks to go before Thanksgiving, it is the season for booking those holiday airline tickets. At the peak, more than two million people a day will cram into those airline seats. So here are some tips to avoid the holiday travel blues. According to aviation experts, cheaper flights are most reliable because they usually leave early. And if you can avoid small regional planes, the bigger the aircraft, the more passengers and the less likely that flight will get canceled. Alrighty, let's turn to David and talk some weather starting off the work week. Nice blue skies yeah, today. Yeah, it feels great. Uh, Holly Not in downtown bad. Canberra, just some blue skies overhead. The clouds that we had this morning gone. And it's going to be dry all week with cool fall temperatures overall. It warms up a little bit toward the end of the week, but that's ahead of a front that's going to bring us some showers, maybe even a few storms on Saturday morning. And then another shot of colder air toward the end of the weekend. Outside, a little breezy, 13 mile per hour winds out of the north, but overall feels great in the valley. We're in the low to mid 50s outlying areas in the upper 40s in some spots and just a beautiful day. Nothing on the radar at all and our Viper cast showing clear skies through the rest of the day. This is five o'clock for the commute home. Northerly winds continue at about 10 to 15 miles per hour and then we'll see uh, clear skies for the most part into tonight as even cooler air sinks in. We're going to get up to about 60 today for a high. A lot of folks won't even get out of the 50s and then tonight we're going to drop down into the mid to upper 30s, 39 for the low in Chattanooga starting out our Tuesday. Heading into Tuesday afternoon, it's going to stay clear, cool, and dry. Wednesday, got a front trying to bring in uh, some clouds to the Tennessee Valley. I think it will Wednesday night into Thursday, but it's going to fizzle out. We won't have any rain with that front and really not much cooler air. As a matter of fact, Thursday and Friday will feature warmer air moving in ahead of this front that is going to bring rain to the Tennessee Valley on Saturday morning and possibly into early afternoon. If you're planning things for the weekend, the bottom line is expect rain in the morning. Afternoon, uh, a little iffy right now, but it looks like it will be clearing out through the afternoon. And then Saturday night into Sunday, looks like it will be dry and a little chilly for whatever you have planned. Uh, rainfall amounts for the weekend. This again, Saturday morning and early afternoon, about a third to a half an inch of rain. So mostly sunny today, 61, just a nice cool fall day. Chilly tomorrow morning, 39 for the overnight low in Chattanooga under mostly clear skies. And our storm alert seven day forecast, low 60s today and tomorrow, or uh, yeah, today and tomorrow for highs, lows though 
getting nice and chilly, dropping down into the upper 30s. 59 the high on Wednesday, and then we'll see it a little bit warmer Thursday and Friday. Clouds are going to build ahead of that front. 63 Thursday, 65 on Friday. Overnight lows are going to be in the mid 40s, and then here comes the weekend. Very mild Saturday morning, but we're also going to have a lot of rain going on Saturday morning, uh, possibly into the early afternoon. But Saturday afternoon into Saturday evening will feature cooler air streaming in, allowing our temperature to drop all the way down to 35 degrees on Sunday morning and will stay nice and chilly on Sunday afternoon with sunshine and a high of only 55 degrees. So uh, yeah, pretty typical <laughs> fall forecast heading into the end of November. Yeah, looking at those 30s, some chilly starts to the Very morning. Much. All right, thanks, David. Uh -huh. Today in Grundy County, the school board will discuss hiring a new football coach. This comes after five football players were charged with attempted aggravated rape. The last coach was transferred to a new position. The board will also discuss missing concessions and gate money. That meeting is scheduled for tonight at 6 o'clock Central Time at Grundy County High School. Two students from Central High School have been suspended and cited to court on vandalism charges after a neighborhood in Ottawa continues to clean up the damage. Neighbors are upset that mailboxes, cars and even a police cruiser all spray painted with obscene words and drawings. One person said all four tires were slashed on his car. Some say they want all the damage to be paid for. That's not a prank. Um, this is personal damage. They need to be held accountable. In some form or fashion, community service for every house that was damaged, that would that'd suit me. On Friday, the school resource officer at Central High School found two students with spray paint. They were not arrested, but were suspended. Still to come on Eyewitness News at noon, head coach Butch Jones out at Tennessee. Sports director Paul Shaheen takes a look back at his five-year career with the Vols after the break. And of course, at the top of the newscast, we went live to Knoxville where the interim head coach was speaking about the future of the Vols. Stay with us. Much more ahead. Well, it happened. Today was the day that many Big Orange fans had been waiting for. The firing of Butch Jones was inevitable here on Rocky Top. It was never a question of if, but more of a question of when. In his fifth year as head coach, the Vols currently sit four and six overall and winless in SEC play. Not to mention multiple recruits have already withdrawn their commitment to the University of Tennessee, putting the future of the program at stake. Now, in order to understand how we got here, we first have to revisit the past. Sports director Paul Shaheen has more on the rise and fall of Butch Jones. 
It wasn't always so boldly spray-painted on the rock, or much less even a thought. In fact, Butch Jones was hired to be the rock, the rock to pull Tennessee out of a recruiting nightmare and take advantage of a down-and-out SEC East. The honeymoon phase started with Butch's first signing class, the building blocks. Josh Dobbs, Jalen reeves Maven, Cam Sutton, a haul that paid off in year two. The Vols won seven games for the first time in five years, successfully ending a three-year bull drought, the longest since the late 70s. Uh, we came here for a purpose, and the purpose was to win the bowl game. Year three, 2015, still climbing. A second straight top 10 signing class in Tennessee's first preseason top 25 since Phil Fulmer's final season. The Vols down Georgia for the first time in five years. Nine win season capped off with an Outback Bowl win and a dance from Butch Jones. Year four, a boatload of hype and talent heading into 2016. The ascent continued but was nearing its peak. With a top 10 preseason ranking for the first time in more than a decade, Ball Nation wasn't asked to, but they buckled up. Five straight wins to open the season. An overtime thriller against App State. A win over Florida, snapping an 11-year Gator reign of terror. And an answered prayer to take down Georgia in Athens. I 100% firmly believe we were going to catch the football and we were going to score. But with most every rise comes the fall. From 5-0 inside the top 10 and in control of the SEC East, 5-3 on the outside looking in. Their leading running back, Jalen Hurd, left midseason the 12th of Butch's 2014 class to transfer. The SEC East Championship was now out of reach and Butch Jones was about to unleash a line that will live in UT infamy. They've won the biggest championship and that's a championship of life. Six days later, the Vols lost a shot at the Sugar Bowl with only their fourth loss to Vanderbilt in 33 seasons. This is our state! This is this unacceptable, it's embarrassing. A Music City Bowl win meant a nine-win season, but something felt off in terms of what could have been. Year five, 2017. The end is near and by week three, you can smell it. Play calling is questioned after ditching the run game in an ugly loss to Florida. Week four, the Vols escape. Yes, escape a winless UMass team at home. Just flat out unacceptable. From there, the offense disappears. 15 straight quarters without an offensive touchdown. Four straight league losses, including a 41-point home shutout loss to Georgia. Milan Stadium's worst Tennessee loss ever. Rumors of fights involving suspensions and stitches for starters. Recruits start decommitting, adding insult to injury. As Tennessee falls from grace, Georgia sets off on a meteoric rise under a second-year head coach, all but sealing the fate of Tennessee's 23rd head football coach. Associate head coach and D-line coach Brady Hoke will now serve as the interim head coach for the Vols for the remainder of the season. He will take the podium for the Vols regular noon press conference on Monday. For now, in Knoxville, Jill Jelnick, Channel 3 Eyewitness Sports. And of course, we took that news conference live at the top of our newscast from Brady Hope. We'll continue to follow this story. That was Jill Jelnick and Paul Shaheen. We're going to hear from Jill Jelnick a little bit later in this broadcast as we continue to follow this developing story and all that's going on there on Rocky Top. Still ahead on Eyewitness News at noon, starting today, a main road downtown will be closed for 100 days. Details after the break. Stay with us.
With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at noon. Thank you for joining us for Eyewitness News at noon. I'm Latrice Curry. We're going to check in with David in just a moment for a look at your forecast. But first, Chattanooga police are searching for a man accused of raping a woman in the North Shore area. Officers say it happened around 730 Saturday morning. The victim told police she was sleeping when the suspect broke into her home through a window. Channel 3's Kate Smith is working to find out more details about this story. We'll bring you the latest on air and online as soon as more information is available. However, if you have any information that can help investigators, call the Chattanooga Police Department. All right, drivers, listen up. If you use Martin Luther King Boulevard through downtown, your drive will take a bit longer starting today. Crews are closing the section between Market Street and Georgia Avenue for the next phase of the $14 million Miller Park Plaza renovation project. Leaders say the inconvenience will be worth it. You'll notice big changes when the road reopens in February. It certainly is, you know, uh, an impact to a lot of folks uh, and definitely a growing pain, as you say. Um, but we feel like the end result is going to be such a great boost uh, for the Chattanooga community and provide such a, a gateway into the, the great uh, districts that we do have around the area. After MLK reopens, Georgia Avenue will then be closed for 30 days. The project expected to be complete by the summer of 2018. Chattanooga police still trying to piece together why a person was stabbed on Gillespie Road. It happened around 930 last night. Officers say that they're investigating an aggravated assault that involved a stabbing. One person is in custody today. The victim was taken to the hospital and they're expected to be OK. Chattanooga police were also investigating a shooting that happened on Olive Street yesterday afternoon. First responders treated the victim there at the scene. A Grundy County woman is accused of trying to burn down her parents' home. Tracy City Police arrested 39-year-old Stephanie Morrison from Palmer. On Thursday, police were called to 12th Street to remove Morrison, who was arguing with her parents. On Friday, a driver saw flames coming from the home and called 911. Later that day, police saw Morrison walking down the street and she smelled like gasoline. She was taken to the police station for questioning and arrested. You probably don't know it, but Tennessee is holding money that could be yours. The Department of Treasury has $890 million sitting in an account waiting to be claimed. The money comes from forgotten bank accounts, old paychecks, insurance policies, utility deposits, and the state is keeping it for you. Forever. There is never a time limit to claim money in Tennessee. You can go in and search at any point. You can also go in and search for relatives who've maybe passed away and you could still help claim that money in their name. Channel 3's Lori Mitchell has spent the past few weeks on the phone and knocking on doors trying to connect and people whatever. with their cash. More than $32 million in unclaimed Wait, no, no, property belongs to people right here in Hamilton County. So the question is, what are you waiting for? Go look for your name now on claimittn.gov. We have the link on our website and be sure to watch the full story tonight on Eyewitness News at 6. Starting today, Channel 3 is gearing up for our 33rd annual Share Your Christmas Food Drive. Donations will be accepted on Friday, December the 8th from 4.30 until 6 p.m. at several locations throughout the Tennessee Valley. If you can't make it down, we hope to see you, but if you can't, you can still give online or drop off non-perishable food items at participating Food City, Walmart, and Walmart neighborhood market stores. You can find more details on WRCBTV.com. We'll have more on this all throughout the morning. David, it's hard to believe it is that time again Looking for Share to Your Christmas. I know, it's always <laughs> a great start to the holiday season, and I hope a ton of people come out to First Tennessee Pavilion and take part. Uh, beautiful weather today, uh, feels great outside. Holiday in downtown camera, blue skies, 55 degrees in Chattanooga and a little breezy. We've got winds out of the north at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Pretty clear on our Viper cast through the rest of the afternoon and nice and cool this evening. Maybe fire up the grill and uh, sit out on the porch bundled up drinking coffee and uh, yeah, eating a steak and some, I guess, what is that corn hamburger? Whatever it is. Have a good time. Yeah, 60 degrees by 3 p.m. Back down to 54 and clear by 6 o'clock. We'll have your complete forecast coming up in just a moment right now for more headlines. We go right, right back to Latrice. All right. Thanks so much there, David.
Hundreds of people were killed and thousands more injured after a powerful earthquake struck the Iraq-Iran border region on Sunday. NBC's Ali Aruzi reports from Tehran. Powerful earthquake with the epicenter on the Iranian-Iraqi border has killed at least 300 people and injured thousands more when the earthquake hit last night. As always is the case in these disasters, officials expect the casualty to rise when search and rescue teams reach remote areas affected by the earthquake. And it's in these remote rural areas where houses that are made of mud bricks can crumble easily, trapping people underneath them. Now, this powerful earthquake was felt in several provinces of Iran, but the hardest hit area was a place called Kerman Shah, about 10 miles from the Iraqi border. Iranian emergency services says that the main hospital in Kerman Shah was severely damaged and couldn't treat hundreds of injured people who were taken there. Electricity has also been cut off in several Iranian and Iraqi cities, and fears of aftershock sent thousands of people in both countries out into the streets and parks in the cold, huddled together underneath blankets. The Iranian seismological center registered around 50 aftershocks and said more were expected. The Iranian Red Crescent says that about 70,000 people were in need of emergency shelters. Now, Iran sits astride a major fault line and is prone to frequent uh, tremors. The power of this earthquake was felt uh, as far south as Baghdad and as far west as Israel and Turkey. Ali Aruzi, NBC News, Tehran. Well, a thick cloud of toxic smog, 10 times the recommended limit, covered India's capital, New Delhi, today. Government officials are struggling to tackle a public health crisis that is well into its second week. A U.S. embassy measure showed levels of poisonous airborne particles had reached 495 today, compared with the upper limit of good quality air at 50. India's weather office says forecast rain over the next three days could help clear the smog. Some schools remain closed today. The road to recovery is just beginning in Las Vegas. After the break, we take a look at how they're attempting to cope with the tragedy. New allegations of sexual harassment in Hollywood. Two well-known actors are now facing accusations. NBC's Stephanie Goss reports more than 20 high-profile men have faced a variety of accusations. Stop the rape! Stop the violence! Stop the rape! The Me Too campaign moving from online to the streets of Hollywood at Sunday's Take Back the Workplace rally. This is 2017. The time is ripe for a reckoning. 
for a reordering of power. Demands for change come as two more Hollywood actors face accusations. Star Trek icon George Decay accused by a former model of groping him in 1981 after he says he passed out from drinking. I said, no, I don't want to do this. And I pushed him off and he said, okay, fine. Decay denying the allegations, tweeting, the events he describes back in the 1980s simply did not occur and I do not know why he has claimed them now. This morning, Oscar-winning actor Richard Dreyfuss is also on defense, just a week after supporting his own son's groping claims against actor Kevin Spacey. Writer Jessica Tisch telling New York Magazine the elder Dreyfuss exposed himself to her in 1987. I just tried to swiftly get out of the room. I pretended it hadn't really happened. Dreyfus emphatically denies exposing himself, saying, I did flirt with her, and I remember trying to kiss Jessica as part of what I thought was a consensual seduction ritual that went on and on for many years. I am horrified and bewildered to discover that it wasn't consensual. ER star Anthony Edwards is accusing producer Gary Goddard of molesting him as a child. A spokesperson for Goddard unequivocally denying the allegations, telling The Hollywood Reporter he has nothing but the greatest respect for Anthony as a person. Gary is saddened by the false allegations. Every day, a new person, and people wake up in the morning saying, who's next? That was Stephanie Goss with that report. Hundreds of people were at the Me Too rally in Hollywood, both men and women. Surveillance video captures the moment a TSA agent grabbed a bag shortly before it exploded. The incident took place at the Orlando International Airport last Friday. You can see people look at this shot moving away from the bag nervously like what is going on here after it started smoldering and then a loud noise went off inside of it. Now even the person holding the bag moved away from it in fear. The TSA agent Rick Perez moved in grabbing the bag and then moving it away from the crowds of people you see there. Fearing the worst, the bag contained a lithium battery that exploded. Now some are calling Perez a hero, but he says he was just doing his job. No one was injured in this incident, though. Scary, scary sight there at the airport. All right, in silence and tears, families of France's deadliest extremist attacks remembered the day two years ago when ISIS militants attacked Paris. They stood alongside the president, Emmanuel Macron, to honor the 130 people killed two years ago today. Security was tight but low profile for the memorial events, part of the new normal in France since November 13, 2015. The commemoration started at the National Stadium to honor the first victim of the night's violence and continued at Paris' cafes where city officials read out the names of the 29 people gunned down while dining and enjoying the balmy night. A million different emotions, but all of them good. Uh, this is just a testament to the resolve of a community that is determined not to let the bad guys win under any circumstances, not to let hate, stupidity, whatever it's going to be that's bad. I'm very proud to be an American right now here, and I'm very proud to uh, be in the bosom of the French people. All but one of the attackers killed France's counterterrorism prosecutor says authorities are still looking for suspects involved in the attacks. Time has passed since the deadly violence in Las Vegas, but the city has a long road of recovery ahead. Jane Wells has an update for us. One month after the worst mass shooting in U.S. history, the broken window at Mandalay Bay has been replaced. But the concert venue where Stephen Paddock murdered 58 people is still closed. The tourists, however, have not deserted this desert oasis. I would like to believe that they would want us to continue to have a good time and live on, you know. Vegas casinos are instituting new security procedures. At the Golden Nugget, owned by Tillman Fertitta, there will be mandatory housekeeping checks now of rooms after 48 hours. But there are legal limits to what he can do. We go by the laws of the state of Nevada, and if somebody has a carrying permit and they're able to bring it into their room, then that's their right, okay? Are we going to question somebody that's carrying a rifle? For sure. Some in Las Vegas say the shooting did hurt business at first. The drop in traffic was even felt at Matthew Morgan's Reef Dispensaries, part of the region's fledgling legal pot industry. You know, definitely right after the, uh, the tragedy, people were definitely canceling their, their reservations and their trips to Vegas. 
Um, I've seen that start to fade away a little bit. Las Vegas-based online retailer Zappos is fundraising money to help victims. But Steven Bautista says the company is paying for funerals out of its own pocket. There hasn't been one expense that we haven't said no to. Uh, we understand that each funeral is run a little bit different, um, you know, where they want to celebrate that life in a different way. And so we're very open to that. Finally, Las Vegas is trying to figure out how to sensitively brand itself. Mandalay Bay owner MGM Resorts released this video two weeks after the massacre. Some criticized it as too soon, too commercial. But later, during the World Series, the Convention and Visitors Authority aired an emotional ad based on tweets from fans of Vegas. It is hoped those fans will come back. But Las Vegas doesn't intend to erase what happened. Locals have created what they're calling the Healing Garden, complete with 58 trees, one for each victim, to permanently mark a night no one here will ever forget. Jane Wells with that report. A survey by Morgan Stanley in mid-October showed that 40% of tourists who planned to come to Vegas said they were postponing or canceling those plans because of the shooting. But not a single convention has been canceled, and locals say it's brought them together in ways they never expected. Some other business news. Hasbro has reportedly offered to buy rival Mattel as gadgets pressure the toy world. Well, the Wall Street Journal reports Hasbro has made a bid for Mattel recently. Mattel has been struggling with weak sales, and such a deal could bring together well-known toy brands from Hasbro's Nerf Transformers and My Little Pony to Mattel's Barbie, American Girl, Fisher Price, and Hot Wheels. Neither company has confirmed the Journal's report. According to J.D. Power's latest study on North American rental car satisfaction, Enterprise comes out on top. Enterprise ranks the highest in overall satisfaction for the fourth and second year. Rounding out the top three are National and Alamo. And there is good news for those looking to rent a car. J.D. Power's study found the average reported daily rental car price has dropped $11 per day this year. All right, time now to turn to David. Talk a little weather. Nice start to the work week out there. Blue it absolutely is not beautiful bad. outside today. Uh, talk about this winter as we head into the winter, a La Nina winter. National Weather Service declaring that we do have La Nina conditions. That was last Thursday. 70% chance that the La Nina conditions will last through the winter. We're going to explain exactly what that means to us here in just a second. Well, La Nina is basically characterized as the opposite of El Nino, which you're probably familiar with with. El Nino is a warming of the water off the eastern Pacific. Uh, La Nina is a cooling of the waters off the eastern Pacific that has worldwide ramifications in weather. Uh, expect it to remain a weak La Nina with the uh, average ocean temperature about a half degree Celsius below average in that swath again off the eastern Pacific so or in the eastern Pacific rather what does that mean for us well across the United States we see the polar jet dipping much further south so a lot of cold and wet weather across the northern plains in the northwest meanwhile warm and dry weather across the southern plains the extreme southeast and down into Florida for us in Tennessee we're kind of in the border uh, we are going to see it a little bit above average uh, with the La Nina winter and precipitation is going to be pretty much on par with what we would typically see getting up into Nashville, Memphis. Typically, it's a little bit wetter during a La Nina blue skies outside right now, though. We're going to have dry, comfortable weather all week. Cool fall temperatures with showers and storms holding off until Saturday morning. And look at this. Boy, is it nice. Nice and cool. Low to mid 50s in the valley. Cooler up toward Altamont. 44 degrees and a nice breeze blowing out of the north at 13 miles per hour. Pretty clear on our satellite and radar with clear skies and cool temperatures continuing to move in. Tonight will be about 10 to 12 degrees cooler heading into Tuesday morning than it was this morning. We'll be in the mid to upper 30s on on Tuesday morning. Blue skies on Tuesday afternoon with a high near 60 and then a few clouds moving in Wednesday into Thursday. Uh, we're actually going to see it warming up though Thursday into Friday as another cold front approaches from the west and by Saturday morning it looks like that front may bring us some rain showers and maybe even some thunderstorms to the Tennessee Valley Saturday morning possibly into early Saturday afternoon. Still some uh, periods of heavy rain. And then as we progress through Saturday afternoon, it looks like it's going to begin to fade away. Saturday night into Sunday look dry. The timing on that front and when the rain will hit on Saturday, 
it's a long time between now and then, and I'm sure we'll adjust the timing of that over the next several days. Rainfall amounts looking at probably about a half an inch of rain widespread with that system moving through. So some cool mornings, some really nice, comfortable fall afternoons for you to get all those leaves raked up. More showers and storms with that front moving through Saturday morning and then cooling down once again on Sunday. All right, thanks, David. Uh -huh. Well, kids who play more than one sport are more likely to be active teenagers. Researchers in Canada looked at the sports participation of nearly 700 children. Five years later, kids who tried multiple sports were much more likely to keep playing than those who specialized in one sport. Children who didn't play any sports usually remain non-participants as teenagers. Just 9% of boys and 2% of girls worldwide get the recommended one hour of physical activity per day. Well, there's an interesting new way to get in shape, and it's great if you're always short on time. A lot of people say, hey, I just don't have the time. Well, Gail Gallardo shows us how. First, you suit up in a thin-skinned scuba-like getup while your trainer wets down an electronic stimulation suit. And sit that up in the front for me if you can. Once you officially look like a Terminator, it's time to work out. Just push for two. And pull yes. down for two. Good. The wires are connected to a console where trainers can turn up the current. You're stimulating your entire body at the same time. And you work your whole body from buys to tries. Almost there. And let's do three more, okay? And glutes to abs. The 20 minute workout is said to be the equivalent of 90 minutes sweating it out at the gym, and you don't have to do it every day anywhere from just one time to three times per week. The high-tech workout claims to burn calories and build muscles with these small bursts of exercise. And the equipment used is now FDA approved. This technology, by the way, has been used for years to treat injuries. You should always check with your doctor before starting any new exercise routine. Coming up on Eyewitness News at noon, Channel 3 sports reporter Jill Jelnick will, believe, will be live with the latest from Knoxville. Stay with us.
Just about an hour ago, we heard from UT's interim coach for the first time. Brady Hoke addressed the media in a news conference. Channel 3's Jill Jelnick was there and joined us live from Knoxville with the latest. Jill, all eyes on Rocky Top today. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Latrice. When news broke yesterday that head coach Butch Jones had been fired, athletic director John Curry immediately appointed Brady Hoke as the interim head coach for the remainder of the season. As you mentioned, we just heard from him not too long ago for the first time. And I'll be honest, this press conference was short and sweet. He did not elaborate on the last 24 hours, nor did he go into much detail about this past season. He did, however, strongly emphasize that his goal for the remainder of the season is to finish strong. The Vols are currently four and six overall and have two regular games left in the season. First, a home game this weekend against LSU and then another home game in two weekends against Vandy. Now, in order for them to be bowl eligible, they have to win both of these games. But more than anything, Coach Hoke wants the seniors on this team to go out the right way. They've been the heart and soul of this program for the last four years. And Coach says winning for them is their sole focus. These last two games are only about one thing, and that's the seniors on this football team. And they have been part of uh, 29 wins, three bowl wins, and they've laid a foundation for this program uh, that uh, uh, was badly needed. And I think they, they're the ones who uh, we play for. Now, he did mention that he will meet with the team later today at 2.30, where they will continue to prep for the LSU Tigers and shift their focus to winning out the remainder of this season. I'll have more coming up later at 5, but for now, live in Knoxville, Jill Jelnick, Channel 3 Eyewitness Sports. All right, Jill, thanks so much for that live story and live report there. We're back after this. All right, go enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for watching Eyewitness News at noon. Days of our live is next.
Check, check, one, two, one, two, three, four. We're talking about big. Okay, hang on just a second. In three, two, we're talking about big bucks. Tennessee is holding $890 million that belongs to individuals and businesses. Money that's sitting there waiting for someone like you to claim it. Okay, we'll go to the tag.